Hi, my name is John. And my name is Lloyd. And we're the hosts of The Pint. A pop culture podcast. Lloyd, if you had to tell any of the people out there that might be listening to The Pint for the first time about anything uh, unsavory or disconcerting we might do on the show, what would you warn them about? Well, sometimes we drop spoilers and sometimes we swear like motherfucking sailors. Fuck yeah, we do. You heard it from him. You've been warned. Listen in. day wait on the handguns but the rifles you can take right now you can't do that welcome to a brand new episode of the pint we are a pop culture podcast my name is john my name is lloyd this is eric hot coffee lawsuit this is patrick and we are here to talk about a movie that is celebrating its 40th anniversary that's right a movie that's only i don't know 25 years uh younger than lloyd that's right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, not even close. Today we are digging into 1984's. Let's well, let's see. I know you know because you see the name of the show. So whenever we do this, it's always bullshit. But but can people identify it from this? Ga 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 ga. The Terminator. Let's get into it. All right, Master, take it away. Tell us all about Jim Cameron. Tell us all about the Terminator. Well, the Terminator came out. October 26, 1984, uh, my high school graduation year. Uh, Written and directed by James Cameron, known for the short film Xenogenesis, uh, production assistant on Rock and Roll High School. Let's see, he was the art director in Battle Beyond the Stars. Uh, He also did special effects in Escape from New York, and uh, he also did Piranha 2. The Spawning. Yeah, The Spawning. So you'll know him from those movies. Now, um, did he did he complete that movie, or did he get he fired, was, or what was the deal with that? The Piranha, Piranha 2? 2? Yeah. He was fired, I knew, right? I, I he know was, he got credit somehow, he, but was he fired? was not. He was not the first director, and he did not finish the movie. He was like, right. in the middle there. <laughs> in the middle. Um, also, written has a writing credit, but really didn't. Uh, the farthest it goes was some suggestions uh, by Gail Ann Hurd, who is also the producer uh, so she was married to Cameron from 85. What, what one of his fucking 12 wives. This guy gets yeah. married. This guy, if this guy like walks into like a fucking department store and sees a woman at the register, he asked her to marry him. <laughs> he marries women more than he goes to the Titanic. I think this fucking guy. True. Uh, also, so listen about uh, Gail. So you'll know Gail from the Terminator, Aliens, Abyss, Tremors, Ghost in the Darkness, Armageddon, The Walking Dead. She's been involved in a lot of great movies. Married to Jim Cameron, Brian De Palma, and Jonathan Hensley. She's so kind of type. She's, she's kind of like type. him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct a, a major motion picture and get some of that ass. <laughs> yeah, ass. Uh, cinematography uh, by Adam Greenberg, who uh, did a movie I love, Near Dark, uh, Three Men and a Baby, Ghost, Terminator 2, Snakes on a Motherfucking Plane. and uh let's see filming locations so primarily filmed right in la uh from march to may of 1984 bunch of different places uh i won't list them all but the griffith observatory uh that's where he arrives from the future uh the tech noir nightclub the interior was a set but the exterior was a real bar can i tell you that the tech noir the tech noir scene i literally said to myself if there is a place on earth (laughs) <laughs> and I can picture Lloyd going to. It's Tech Noir. Tech from fucking Noir. The Terminator. Wasn't that 80s right. photo taken at Tech Noir? That famous <laughs> Lloyd 80s. <laughs> yeah. The Miami yeah, Vice Master. Miami picture. Vice, yeah. We had a place that I went to called The Riot uh, in Hartford. Tech Noir adjacent. <laughs> yeah, Tech Noir adjacent. Yeah. Uh, Carol's Restaurant, uh, where they eat. Union Station, uh, the bus station where, where they chase, get chased. 
and a bunch of various streets and alleyways, and also in the Mojave Desert for the uh, drive to Mexico. So they used a lot of uh, guerrilla filmmaking tactics in this, kind of in and out. I know I, I saw him talking about um, the scene where Al, uh, Arnold punches through the window. That when he steals the, the car in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, when he yeah. steals the car, the side window, not the driver's. Uh, that was after window. filming was done, right? Yeah. Yeah, they had to, and they needed that that shot, and they just got dressed. Yeah, and it, got it basically he said, here, put this uh, glove on and punch through that window. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, me? Was, it, was that the Griswolds family truckster? Was it that one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All eight headlights. <laughs> Uh, the initial outline of the script was basically involved two Terminators being sent, one of the Arnold version and a liquid metal version a la T2. Yeah, he had to wait for the money. Yeah, money and, I guess, technology. And the technology, yeah. He's, yeah. he's famous for waiting for technology to catch up to his ideas. So. Yeah. So speaking of Gail Ann Hurd before she bought our, she, you know, Cameron sold her the rights for one dollar. Yeah, so he could be the director. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is, I think, a good move. He might have regretted that price, but did you read Manster? I'm sure you have it in your notes, but I want to bring it up. Like where he got the idea for the movie was while he was making Piranha Two, and he had been fired, and he was still in Italy. He was he apparently had broken in at some point to edit. I don't I don't know. Like that he was trying to get editing done, and he was sneaking around doing it, even though he'd been fired. But he was living in his car in Italy. Yeah, um, which sounds nicer than living in your car here, probably. But he was living in his car in Italy and he had a nightmare about a, a metal exoskeleton crawling out of the fire with two knives, a knife in each hand chasing <laughs> after him. And, and uh, that that was the birth of the uh, what would become the T-800. But another trivia fact that I didn't realize is that the word T-800 is only used in video games and other ephemera. Mm. It's not actually brought up until Terminator Salvation. In this movie, yeah. it is the um, Cyberdyne model, model 101, yeah. 101, right? Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. confusing. Uh, it, it always bothers me. Yeah. So, so all of Reese's jibber-jabber, he doesn't mention the model like once and all that? He does. No. He mentions it that one time. He tells her. Oh, okay. He says it's a 101, and then he says and the, six, the 600s had rubber skin. Yep. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. second Terminator in part two says it as well when he introduces himself to, uh, to uh, John Connor. He says uh, 101? Yeah. Okay. I haven't yeah. seen that in a while. Spoiler <laughs> alert for the listeners out there. We're doing two, Terminator okay. 2 very soon. So uh, Another fun story is uh, when Cameron wanted to finalize his pitch, uh, he had Lance Henriksen, who was a buddy of his, show up dressed like the Terminator mm-hmm. and like break into, kicked open the door and like sat in a chair and, and being all menacing. And then uh, I guess Cameron came in and calmed it down. And basically they were, they were impressed, impressed with the script and the passion and uh Agreed to back it and increase their budget. Lance Henriksen has is a you know wonderful character actor and he has done a million things. He has nothing to be ashamed of. But this guy was the threat to Peter Weller when he was trying to quit Robocop. He's the guy who basically got Terminator funded and then didn't like nobody gave him the job. He's like he's he's like Detective Pete Vukovic. He's got yeah. like four <laughs> lines. Like, poor fuck. I kind of feel bad for him a little bit. Yeah. Does everyone uh, know the other person who was mentioned as possibly playing the Terminator? So this is like, this is like, I've heard claim to be rumor. From what I heard, yeah. the uh, the guy Metavoy, who was like the head of, uh, of Caracol, uh, maybe, um, or whatever. He was at Caracol and TriStar, and now he's at something called Phoenix Pictures, yeah. He supposedly suggested, uh, our dearly recently departed, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Uh, Orenthal, uh, James Simpson, uh, all time, uh, Buffalo Bills leading rusher and, um, guy who may or may not have almost cut his wife's head off. I don't know. Right, I right. can't tell you. Well, you know? he eventually got the role just, you know, a different place. <laughs> In 1994, he got the role of the Terminator. <laughs> oh, fuck. Preparing for his role 10 years after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Edit, edit, uh, edit, edit, edit. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> No, I was just joking. Edit, edit. So, yeah, yeah. got to cut, got to cut that out. Yeah, We're not cut, cut allegedly, that out. allegedly. Yeah, just say allegedly. Right. It's all good. Yeah, all right. Good. Um, and one more uh, special effects by Stan Winston and his uh, team of artists did a phenomenal job. Made Terminator puppets, uh, molded in clay and plaster and steel and chromed, and yeah, it looked pretty fantastic. Uh, there's a couple of shoddy that, that maybe don't hold up so well after 40 years. With they're the, great. Uh, yeah, they're, they're all right. But. It's great. It's, yeah. it, it is, you know, it holds up when it holds up to our standard because we were there then. 
yeah. like kids nowadays are going to watch it on their phone and go, <clears throat> you know, that's stupid. But then they're going to like just watch TikTok and watch some fat girl dance to something stupid and, and be <laughs> amused by it. So whatever. Who cares what they think? <laughs> no offense if you're like younger than 20 and you listen to the pint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Before we go to cast, there there have been some legal uh, issues, right, with this and some possibilities of uh, plagiarism. And Patrick knows a lot about that. Patrick knows a lot about everything, but Patrick knows a lot about that in particular. So, Patrick, give us a quick rundown of what, like, who said what, what possibly happened. Okay, so a writer named Harlan Ellison, very famous for writing lots of episodic TV in the 60s and 70s, uh, was also very famously litigious, uh, got wind that Terminator may be ripping off some of the episodes of The Outer Limits he wrote 20 years earlier. Um, so basically filed what Cameron described as a nuisance lawsuit and to Cameron's disgust, he was talked into settling by, uh, the studios, I think it was Orion and Hemdale. Cameron maintains to this day, it's bullshit. This was all from him. He wasn't, he didn't lift any ideas. Um, I recently just rewatched the two episodes in question that are usually mentioned as allegedly source material, um, from Outer Limits, second season soldier and demon with a glass hand and there are similarities they're both about time travel soldier has soldiers coming back to fight each other in the present day demon with the glass hand has a time traveling cyborg um trying to protect the human race which that's more the t2 i guess in t1 um but they're so different and it's it's really hard to say that it was plagiarism i think the main thing on Ellison's inside would be that the writers guild of america has very famously arcane laws about establishing authorship. Like if you write 40% of a screenplay or something, you could claim authorship, even if it's vastly different in the final product. Orion just didn't want to risk it. So, so he had to pay it off. El- Ellison claims that Cameron confessed to it, quote unquote, in an interview with Starlog magazine. If you remember that back in the day, oh yeah, saying, saying that he ripped off a couple of outer limits episodes, but no one, to my knowledge, no one has ever like found this interview. So this could have been just, a game of telephone that he heard third or fourth hand. This could be just bullshit. If you go back and watch the episodes, which I recommend because The Outer Limits is a great show, you could see the similarities and maybe a little bit of the DNA, but to call it plagiarism, I think is probably a bridge too far. All right. Yeah, in, in the uh, in the stream version I watched on the shady pop up porn website or whatever, he got credit uh, in the credits. Ellison did. It was a little blurb. I forget what yeah. it said exactly, but. I don't know After, when they added that. I think home release versions adds right at the top of the credits, like with acknowledgement to the works right, of Harlan right. Ellison. Yeah. But the original prints don't say that, obviously. So. James Cameron, knowing how much of like a perfectionist and, and like he's very, um, you know, he does what he wants. And that's kind of his thing. You, I wonder how often he goes to the bottom of the fucking Mariana's Trench and just screams in his little submersible about <laughs> this, even 40 years later, like, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I would hope not. If James Cameron, who is billion fucking dollars and all these Oscars and has the world in the palm of his hand, is stressed about things, then then we're all screwed. The rest of us are screwed. Yeah, I guess that's right. I guess that's right. All right, Eric, bring us the cast. Tell us who we got in this thing. Assemble your crew. Yeah, so, uh, you know, everybody knows, like, Arnold, don't really need to get into. uh, I I did read that he's uh, 6'2", and I also am 6'2", so we have that in common. That's uh, As am I. I. yeah, Yeah, there you go. I will say that he popped up in this uh, this movie I watched like last year called The Long Goodbye. It's kind of like a seventies noir, and he just kind of is there as a bodyguard. It's a it's a cool movie. Uh, uh, Elliot Gould, yeah, yeah, Elliot Gould, yeah. Um, he, uh, I guess, originally the him and Cameron met over over a dinner, and the idea that he was going to play Reese and not the Terminator. And I, during that dinner, neither of them even talked about it. But after the dinner, they both the story goes they both went back to their agents or whatever, and then. Um, Cameron sent him like a, a drawing of him as the Terminator, like ha- you know, face of half Terminator. You can find it online or whatever. And that's a uh, great. And I guess uh, he had like 17 lines in the movie, 18, something like that. Yeah, and 17. Enti- yeah, in the entire movie. Uh, then you have Linda Hamilton, uh, plays Sarah Connor. I-, I think she was only in Children of the Corn prior to this. I don't know if she was in any other features. She was also in a really cheesy movie called TAG, The Assassination Game. Oh my fucking God, I've seen that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've seen. I don't that. know if it was filmed before or after, but I think it was released before. I want to say eighty three. Cool. And uh, fun fact uh, I share with Linda is uh, she was born on my birthday. So we can share her birthday. Right. Exact birthday or uh, well, yeah, exact birthday? No, she was born in I don't know what it's fifty, sixty something, okay. or whatever. 
Um, she's got a few years on me. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way, Linda Hamilton, I guess playing an 18 or a 19 year old in the movie was actually 27 uh, when they filmed. Really? This. Wow. Yeah. As uh, Michael Bean as well, who plays Reese, was also 27. Um, I love uh, Michael Bean. I love yeah. Michael Bean. Now, how, Michael how Bean. is this guy not like he may, you know, the male lead ish in like these major movies and just, you know, he from has, what I've seen, he's well, a he had a big alcohol problem for yeah. many years, oh, okay. but he just everyone has said that he just did not give a shit about being a star and never lied to people, never kissed ass and just kind of made some enemies, I guess, with casting directors and directors and producers. But. Just couldn't care less. Just couldn't care less about being a star. I saw him very recently on on the Michael Rosenbaum podcast, whatever yes. that one's called. Yes, and he he just said he goes, I just didn't want to play the game, and he had a lot of problems. I saw him at Rhode Island Comic Con probably a couple years ago, probably with Lloyd or with Lou or yeah. whatever. And we had a moment. He was sitting at his he was sitting at his at his table, and there was nobody out with him at, for just a second. And I just walked over. And I just looked at his table. I don't pay the celebrity shit. I don't do all that stuff. But he looked up at me. He said, hi. And uh, I said, hey, what's going on? He looked good. Like, it looked like he was probably, because I know he's uh, supposedly, like, gotten past all that stuff. And uh, I just said to him, I said, man, I've, lo- I've loved you. Like, I've loved you in so many things from when I was a kid. And he was like, thanks a lot, man. But, like, it's easy to forget, like, you know, everybody thinks Terminator and Aliens. Man, he's great in the abyss as, like, the fucking, like, the, the you know, guy that's kind of losing it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And he's, and, 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 like, it's almost easy to forget that he's Johnny Ringo because he's got dark hair and, you know, yeah. he, he's so good in that. And then you go, like, a little further and he's fun in, like, Planet Terror with Jeff Fahey where they play, like, the brothers and and uh, I just make, always like chili, him. Making chili, right? And that, yes, yeah, no, it's a barbecue. They're, barbecue, fighting, over, barbecue. they're yeah. fighting over a barbecue recipe for the whole movie. I <laughs> think his last big cinematic release was The Rock. He had a small role in The he's, Rock. He's, where he also faces off with Ed Harris again. So. Yes, and he's so, he's in such a... Like, when I saw The Rock originally, I thought, oh, cool. And he's, like, Seagal in Executive Decision. He's yeah. gone in, like, 20 minutes. That's his role, I think, to get to let you think he's a big part of it and then get killed off. So. Yeah. Plays a Navy SEAL again. I guess that's a, his, uh, <laughs> yeah. his deal. Oh, but he is funny when talking about the movie Navy SEALs. He fucking hates that movie. Yeah, I, I got completely uh, bamboo Not bamboozled. I, I love the archive, but I went to the archive and they, they released Navy SEALs. Vinegar Syndrome released Navy SEALs in this big old chunky box set. I haven't seen it since I saw it in the theaters probably two times in 1990. But I go to the archives sometimes and I get like that fucking like, oh, I got to have this. I haven't watched it yet, but uh, I have a feeling it's it's probably not very good. Now I have a Blu-ray that takes up four other Blu-ray spots on my shelf because I can't control myself. I'm like Lloyd. <laughs> it's a $50 coaster. Yeah, uh, yeah probably. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Reese is, uh, you know, he's a time traveling uh, lover boy. And is the Mr. DNA of the film because he gives more exposition and then, you know, during car chases, you know, Terminator, whatever, laser beams. And he's just explaining the whole thing. Uh, awesome, though. Uh, awesome how they did that. Um, then quickly, you have um, Dave Winfield. He played uh, uh, Lieutenant Tre- Trexler. Um, and, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul Winfield. Oh, Paul. I'm sorry. Paul. Dave Winfield was right field yeah, for the Dave Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, yeah, I don't know if Paul ever played. But um uh, one movie I liked that Paul was in was Damnation Alley, 1977 movie with uh, uh, Jan Michael Vincent. It's some futuristic, apocalyptic <clears throat> thing, I guess, you know, kind of jives with, with this movie. Um, and we talked about Lance Hendrickson. He also plays uh, plays uh, uh, Lieutenant, uh, what's his name? Oh, he plays a detective. Vukovic. Vukovic. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, everyone knows a bunch of stuff. Uh, Lloyd's Near Dark um, plays a vamp in that. Um, did you guys ever watch Millennium? That uh, series? oh yeah, the TV show. Yeah, yeah right. was it, he won a bunch of stuff for that. Was it? It was like was that a sci-fi? It was Chris Carter. It was it was his oh, like Chris Carter. it was his. I don't think it was a spinoff yeah, of the X Files, but it was yeah, it was like, after X Files. It was it was, it was well, during X Files, but Millennium it was, was like the Star yeah. Wars sequel trilogy because Chris Carter had one idea for season one. Two guys came in to run for season two. He changed everything, and Chris Carter came back for season three and went back to the first season. <laughs> Said everything in season two just ignore so. Real I bad. remember liking it, but I don't remember much about it. I, he's I, he's great in it. He's great in it. Yeah, he played Frank Black. I remember. Yeah, yeah. So the, there's some uh, Reddit controversy over whether Hendrickson also fits the killed by a Terminator alien in Predator trivia answer. I guess mm. does 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 aliens count? Well, he's Bishop. He, he, well, he doesn't die. Yeah, that's the thing. That's yeah. The whole, yeah. yeah, yeah. He still got fucked up though. So yes, I guess you'd say so. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe technically. 
Uh, then uh, uh, quickly, you got Rick Rossovich, who played uh, the the boyfriend uh, Slider from Top Gun, and uh, heavy breather on the uh, the phone call <laughs> in this in this movie. Uh, you got um, one of my favorite lines in the whole movie is uh, "I'm gonna bust you up, man." <laughs> <laughs> the, the entire the, his entire fight scene with the Terminator is him getting thrown through things. With his little every on. every window and glass in the apartment he gets tossed into. Um, and uh, uh, Ginger, the uh, the roommate, is played by uh, Bess Mata, who um, she hosted a uh, a twenty minute workout uh, video, <laughs> exactly video yeah. in a Canadian like uh, aerobics uh, show in the eighties, which looks exactly like the aerobics video in. Friday part four. I was just going to say, I swear to God, I looked it up. I said, this is the same one, but I guess in the eighties, that was it. The white backdrop, you know, the circle of butts or whatever they do, or I swear, I thought it was the same one. I was going to say, did the, did the, um, uh, what was the mortician from Friday or uh, whatever he is from Friday four jerk off to her too. (laughs) Axel, Axel, right. And then, uh, I guess, uh, we just quickly mentioned Earl Bain, Bain, who played the doctor in the uh, in the precinct, and I mention him only because well, he's a that guy. He looks familiar, but he's been in other uh, Terminator movies, two, two and three. I think he was in. I'm not well. sure, but I think Cameron met him while he was doing set design for Battle Beyond the Stars because he plays an alien in Battle Beyond the Stars, one of the white robed like aliens who are all part of. I don't know if everyone's ever seen that, but Long like time. there's a there's a group mind of like five or six who all look alike and they have three eyes and they all talk and he's the leader of that group. So you might have met him there. I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, he's that guy you recognize from stuff. He's been yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And Major- he had a nice little exposition in there saying, oh, that's just a brilliant scheme. <laughs> and it's funny. It's true. You know, I'm thinking it too. It's like just the perfect story to not actually have any proof at all. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. you can't, can't be. Well, you said that you have to be human. How does the robot go? Well, you, it's okay if you're in skin or whatever. So uh, kind of funny. And um, lastly, uh, Bill Paxton, who plays one of the punks uh, when the Terminator arrives. Lead, lead punk, I guess, was his credit or, or, or something like that. I guess uh, they met uh, working on set design for uh, – I like Battle, know. Battle Beyond the Stars. Actually. It was a Battle Beyond the Stars yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I never, you know, I've seen this movie a million times. I, I, last time I had seen it when I logged it in Letterbox was early last year, and I don't know if it's just blindness, but I don't think I ever noticed before that Bill Paxton's character has tire tracks across his face. Yeah. Like, like paint. Like I, I don't know if I've ever noticed that. The other guy, though, there's three guys. The other one's Brian. What's his name? Brian uh, Johnson. Thompson. 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 Thompson, Thompson, yeah, bad guy in the- Cobra, bad uh, uh, the al- the eyeless aliens on X Files. That that dude's been in a million things too. The other guy, I've never seen before, and also totally can't believe that Schwarzenegger fits in his clothes easily. <laughs> yeah, right. That dude was, <laughs> that was small, just the ugliest jacket though. It, but the, the jacket, everything's ugly. But the point is, is, that dude was like a quarter of Schwarzenegger's size. But if you notice, I, I looked to make because I thought the same thing, but it was really big on that dude. Okay, all right. It is a really oversized jacket. Yeah, I was thinking. Did you see that Franco Colombo? He's the Terminator. He plays a future Terminator in the in the flashback. In the flash forward, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Who uh, who who won? Who won Mr. Olympia right after Arnold twice? I think was his claim. Yeah, one of his best friends too. Yeah, he he was in a bunch of stuff. All the the Conan stuff. He was he's in all those movies. I guess. Yep. I just want to throw another cast if I could. Um, Absolutely. Guy named William Wisher Jr., who is uh, kind of co-writer on this. The cop. Wrote, yes, he has a Lincoln Night One L nineteen or whatever. He was he wrote some dialogue for this. He also helped co-write the second script, and he wrote the novelizations. If anyone remembers novelizations, oh yeah, uh, for T one and T two. So one L Lincoln five, one L Lincoln five. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> <laughs> he slams his head into the fucking car and throws him. Uh, all right, let's get into this. We start off uh, with the uh, with the great Brad uh, Fetal, uh, and uh, we're yeah, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. we're in a uh, horrifying future landscape uh, where uh, the Terminator, like uh, I think Cameron's favorite like future motif is skulls all over the ground and things <laughs> running over them because it, tiny it little back, ones too. It, it goes back to it several times, but we're in uh, a future where essentially uh, people are being hunted down by gigantic robots and drones and ships and we have like a like a battle scene that we get to see at the beginning so we're kind of setting that up um this is at some point in the future now we jump back to the current day and we start meeting our cast of characters but right off the bat we get two people or two somethings that uh that kind of uh 
come back in a very uh, interesting fashion. Lloyd, like what what happens? Where, how, how do we meet Schwarzenegger and how do we meet uh, 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 Bean? Well, it just seems to be a, some old some place where there's this dude in a big uh, rig. And he's like, what the fuck? No way. You, know, <laughs> you just see lots of lightning bolts. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's uh, no sphere yet. No, no cool sphere that takes mm-hmm. a chunk of whatever's next. Yeah, no, no, no divot in the ground, I noticed. Right. Yeah, they must um, have, that was later. But you get a naked Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, just out of the blue and uh, just goes walking, <laughs> what, looking over uh, the hills of L.A., buck naked. He has no shame. No shame. He has no shame. I do that scene. Yeah, that's an easy scene to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, what I would love to see is like a unedited version where you see that the Terminator has a micro penis. Yeah. Because they just didn't have enough <laughs> flesh, and that's where that they were like, "That's not right, important." All right. So, or or he's smooth on the bottom. Uh, I like the dichotomy of how he yeah, comes he's back. A Ken. He's a Ken. He's doll. a Ken. <laughs> I like how he comes back and he's just gets up and goes. Because he's a, he's a fucking a robot. When yeah. Kyle Reese comes back, he's all fucked up. He's like, fucked up. He's coughing. He's in yeah. obvious pain. Like that that is not an easy process. Apparently, going through. So the two of them kind of mirror each other. Where they they first go to look for clothes. Uh, the Terminator goes and runs <laughs> into the three punks. They give him a little bit of punk sass, and uh, he he punches one guy through the goddamn spine. <laughs> punk sass. I like <laughs> he gives that. him punk sass. Punches yeah. a dude through the spine. His two friends like start running and he gets the clothes from one guy. Now, Kyle Reese goes goes in a different direction. Kyle right. Reese decides he to steals steal the pants off a homeless guy. He steals the pants off a homeless guy and then puts some on with no underwear on. And then, just as an added treat later on in the movie, fucks our heroine who yeah. doesn't realize that he's been wearing a homeless guy's pants with no underwear on for like a, two days or something. It's it's incredible. Uh, Despite numerous opportunities, never changes out of that. Yeah. At all. No, no, he he loves uh, it. He loves it. Uh, so uh, we as going as commando, he loves it. He loves I don't know it that far. <laughs> I think he loves it. it she bang- it, the amazing good fortune that they they steal the exact size they need. Both of them, like you totally. said, the hundred and fifty pound punk wearing the three XL jacket, and you know <laughs> those uh, tight fitting pants, whatever, fit him perfectly. He goes running through a uh, department store. Cops are chasing him around. This is Kyle Reese, uh, and in in his journey. You know, he, he, he ends up taking a cop kind of, uh, you know, accosting him and he asks him what year it is, uh, what day is it? What year is it? The cop is like, what? And, uh, so we, we get an idea that this guy's probably from somewhere else in time. Uh, but also while he's there, he gets a, a bitch and set fucking Velcro, uh, Nikes <laughs> that I guarantee Lloyd had, yeah. I guarantee Lloyd had those Velcro. <laughs> no, I didn't have those no, around the ankle. Yeah. Nikes. Those weren't Air Jordans. Not yet. No. Uh, and, uh, he also steals a shotgun. Cuts the uh, the the stock off the shotgun, <clears throat> uses a piece of rope, and gives himself a, a trench coat as well. Has a little bit of a you know a hidden uh, you know he's got a kind of a school shooter like going on. <laughs> um, <laughs> he does. He does. Yeah. Let's just be honest about it. Um, all right. So the Terminator uh, now is uh, trying to assess his situation, uh, and he goes looking for someone and also equipping himself. So I'll start with Eric. Eric. He's going through the phone book. Who's he looking for? Sarah Connor. Every Sarah Connor in the Los Angeles phone book, which is only three, by the way. I don't. Believe, <laughs> yeah. I don't believe uh, that. L.A. Maybe I know. You know, I I read that L.A. had like back in the eighties like seventy nine different phone books depending on the area, so it could be legit. You know, you're only looking at that one part of L.A. Or he's whatever. like he's in like Glendale, right? Yeah, like, yeah right, right. <laughs> so he's looking for Sarah Connor. Patrick, he goes to a gun store. Give us a rundown of some of the guns he wants to check out and give us a rundown of who the gun store owner is. The legendary Dick Miller, of course, who I am sure Cameron met as part of uh, because Dick Miller worked for Roger Corman. I don't know how many movies. And that's where Cameron got to start at New World Pictures that Roger Corman owned. So he probably met through that. Also, Dick Miller basically would be in any movie you paid him to be in, essentially. (laughs) Um, So he gets, let's see, he gets an Uzi. He gets uh, a combat shotgun. He tries to get a some kind of plasma <laughs> rifle. Which plasma rifle in the is, 40 watt range. Is then back order, uh, I guess. <laughs> not, not available yet. And hey, just uh, what you see, pal. I guess the I guess this movie is meant to be I guess you could you could interpret it as pro Second Amendment or anti Second Amendment, um, depending on your feeling, because he just promptly loads the shotgun and blows the store owner away without even paying for it. So. What, what my thought process on that was when Dick Miller says to him, Hey buddy, you can't do that. 
you know, yes, I care, whatever, he's wrong, he sh- and he shoots him. But the idea is, like, well, like, you, like, he, just a murderous robot is the only one that could do that. Like, don't put your fucking bullets out, like, right there and then hand someone a shotgun. Yeah. You're, you're, you're literally, like, gas and fire, Dick Miller. I mean, I'm sorry, this, but this probably should have happened, like, 20 years ago <laughs> at, at this rate. So he goes looking, Manster, I got a question for you. The woman, the first Sarah Connor, he goes to her house. The first 35-year-old mother. <laughs> that woman was clearly 52. <laughs> that woman was clearly Look, 52. It was 1984, maybe 83 they filmed it. It was a hard life back then. People yes. aged more quick. It's like frontier life, basically. <laughs> so, let me just, Oregon Trail. Essentially, <laughs> Let yeah. me just interject. Just, I think, one or two nights ago. I just threw on the old game show network just for fu- for fun and looked around and, and I don't know I think it was password or some version and I'm looking at this show I'm like every person on this show is just heinous looking like yeah. what was going on back then yeah. like where were these people the, well there's our, nothing our, like that nowadays I think our perception of ra- reality has been manipulated everyone's yeah. got plastic surgery or they got filters now and we're just not used to seeing just normal looking people like, you know, us. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lloyd's 50, what, nine, 62. <laughs> he looks like that. This is, you're the one that's skewing the fucking worldview. Right, but, but when I they apologize. did, but when he does kill, so he, he goes in, he busts the door open. Sarah Connor, she says, yes, he busts the door open. She's clearly 52. He pops her. <laughs> and then, and then later we find out, we find out from the police are like 35 year old Sarah Connor. Which, yeah. And I'm like, no, that, did we Not miss? 35. We didn't see the second one. Was that? No, that was yeah. that one. The con- so, continuity girl should have caught that and just changed that to 45 or something. Yeah, so. I would have loved what it. I, what I did like about that scene is when he pulls in um, with his car, he, he crushes like a, a truck. Much like <laughs> just, the, the skull. Much like crushed. in reverse yeah. what happens in the end. I thought yeah. that, was, that was neat. So, uh, okay, Eric, walk us through. You can do both of them, okay? Kind of give us, because we're, we're going to go through both of them now. But Kyle Reese is uh, is looking for Sarah Connor as well. But he has a couple of flashbacks mm-hmm. to this movie. So just give us a generalized idea of what his life is like and what's happening in his future. I does a lot of crouching behind, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, gutted automobiles. Again, uh, kind of crawling on skulls. And, uh, you know, Terminators, what's, what's the, uh, the model that, that he mentions is like the Hunter. Six hun- oh, the HKs. The, the Hunter HKs. Killers, yeah. He kind of mentions them a lot. And, uh, yeah, he, he, they, you see flash forwards of him and, and a couple of other folks or whatever, just, you know, occasionally winning a battle or two or blowing one out of a hundred up or something. And, and, uh, and then kind of retreating down back to the headquarters, kind of an underground headquarters yeah. kind of thing. So, uh, rough life. Uh, for Reese, what do, what do we learn about the Terminators in terms of what what uh, can detect them? Oh, uh, dogs! Yeah, dogs, uh, which we see a few, uh, one or two in the when in he, this movie. When he goes to kill Sarah Connor, the the fifty two year old, uh, the dog is barking at him. Um, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and then we see when uh, when Franco Colombo shows up and uh, kills everybody. Well, starts killing everybody in in that underground tunnel. The dogs are going nuts. Yeah. Uh, I loved the scene where where him. And his partner are um, take out that uh, HK tank or whatever. I love that when his partner like throws the bomb and then the the turret just immediately like catches her and like hits her oh, yeah. and she just fucking blows up. Yeah. Like there's just body parts everywhere. We'll get to it. Uh, you know what, Lloyd? I'm gonna have to ask you this because I did budget. All right, I'm sorry. I did box office. What was the budget of this movie? Do you know that off the top of your head? Anybody? Yeah, uh, I got a six point four million dollar. Yeah. This movie looks fucking good right. for six. And it was originally four or four and a half or something. And after they funded it, you know, they gave him more money. Those future scenes are fucking really fucking good. Um, yeah. All right, so we find a uh, forced perspective. I, I I was watching a little thing about it. Like the stuff in the in the foreground is really small, like two inch small, you know, little skulls and things. Mm-hmm. And the and then the middle was the the far away stuff was like really big, like cutouts, like. Cardboard cutouts painted black for to be silhouettes. Yeah, it was pretty it's, cool the way they did that all. It's kind of funny because uh, it was it said six point four million, uh, and yeah. then just seven years later, T two was the first movie to. I remember <laughs> this is a big deal at the time to break a hundred million dollar budget. Yep. Yeah. Which is now, which is now you call it like you know a moderate budget um, with with uh, some of these movies breaking three hundred fifty million. But that's bizarre in that short period of time that his budget went up by a factor of like twenty or something. 
Yeah. Great yeah. Yeah, even yeah. Aliens was only like nineteen or something. Yeah, very, very yeah, economical. Very he, yeah. he got a lot out for his dollar on those movies. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, so a couple Sarah Connors go down. We meet our Sarah Connor, uh, who is I think eighteen or nineteen in the script, as <laughs> as was mentioned. Uh, she drives a scooter. She works at Abdow's Big Boy, which used to be on the Berlin Turnpike. Oh, uh, I loved Abdow. <laughs> uh, she she's a waitress there. Um, scene I don't believe at all as a, as a fat kid. Is when the kid puts the ice cream in her pocket. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no kid on earth is gonna fuck around with ice cream. You've got ice cream. You're going to eat it. You're not going to put it in a. Now, look. If it was like green beans, it would have made way more sense. But it's fucking ice cream and that little fucking cretin. And it was purple. Like, what was it? Was that? It was like rainbow know. or cotton rainbow. candy. I don't know something. So she's having a bad day. The other thing I really want to know in this movie: what's a burly beef? It sounds good. Well, no, sounds- apparently, apparently, no one ordered it, so <laughs> yeah, nobody she, had. She, the- she yeah, couldn't right. give it away. So I had the barbecue beef, ma'am. Are you going to take our order? <laughs> and, then, and then, as she's fucking up everybody's order, her uh, her obnoxious friends like, "You got to see this, Sarah." And yeah. then she shows her the news uh, coverage that all the Sarah Connors in the greater Los Angeles area have been murdered in one day <laughs> with, uh, with great with great delight. Really yeah, enjoys right. showing her friend this story. She's so happy. Yeah. You're, You're dead, dead. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so she she is re- you know reasonably worried because uh, she's only the third and two of them are gone. So she uh, she goes home. She's supposed to have a date that night, and uh, her best friend Ginger and her boyfriend Matt, aka Slider, you stink uh, from Top Gun, uh, are uh, are going to be hanging out too. Her boyfriend and or date cancels on her. Uh, so she changes really quick and decides to go to a movie by herself, like a fucking goon. No, just just, just just quickly on that. I guess I guess that was voiced by James Cameron on the answering machine. He's multiple voices in the movie. Oh, really? That, yes. I didn't know that. Yes, he's and that. I was, just, I was just thinking he came this close to being uh, John Connor's dad. You know, if he did go on the date. Yeah, the really. Future could have. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, well, yeah. well, you didn't interrupt. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but in other like great news, he ended up marrying uh, Linda Hamilton at one point. So it worked. It did, yeah. A phone call worked at some point. Uh, also, so, a tiny little bit of trivia. Yeah. Rick Rossovich. Rick Rossovich later was directed by Schwarzenegger in an episode of Tales from the Crypt. I knew Schwarzenegger oh, directed really? an episode, but I had never seen it. And I didn't realize Rossovich was in that. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, so she ends up going out. She's going to go get pizza and uh, go to a movie. And Ginger and Matt are gonna fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ginger gets made up, re- like made up and dressed really nice just to fuck. Cause like I don't know what the timeline was, but like I don't know if they left the apartment. But anyways, so she goes and she's hanging out. She's having a, a personal pan pizza at a, at a pizza place, and she sees the news report about now uh, more of this happening. Um, so she starts getting nervous. She also is noticing that uh, that uh, school shooter uh, uh, Kyle Reese is yeah. like kind of following her. And uh, he's kind of like checking her out from across the street. He's doing creepy dude stuff, right? All he needs is a van to really fully become a creepy dude. He is not good at following. He is not good at following. He, he doesn't not. even try to hide behind a, a telephone pole or anything. He just stares right at her. No, he is. <laughs> you're, you're right. He's not great at it. Um, the Terminator finds out about the last Sarah, her um, address. He goes to the apartment and uh, what happens, uh, Patrick, to uh, to our loving couple after coitus? This is a very odd scene to me because for some reason, instead of just blowing them away, the Terminator decides to have some fun, tries to punch through uh, Rick Rossovich's head, puts a hole in the pillow, and then they tussle a little bit. I'm not sure, <laughs> I guess to make it more exciting, but logic-wise, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Why does he just break his neck or shoot him? Yeah. Um, but basically beats him to a pulp, scares poor Ginger, who runs away, and then she gets the Terminator remembers, oh, I have a gun, and shoots her in the back and uh, blows her away. Yeah. And then, Several then though, times. he realizes that <laughs> it's not actually his target because he hears the voice and he finds the driver's license and yeah. realizes that that's, that's uh, Linda Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, apparently, unlike dogs, iguanas do not recognize Terminators. So No, iguanas are no, he, 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 was, he was of no help. Hey, Pugsley, fuck you. You didn't help anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger's dead. <laughs> Slider's dead. Uh, all right. Manster, she calls the cops, and the cops are like, uh, you know, well, she she leaves the pizza place, skips the movie. Uh, yeah, she and goes, goes straight to Tech Noir. Tech Noir, because she's like, I'm going to meet a guy like Manster here. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm going to meet a guy who's 80s dancing. Did you? Did, did any of you just pay attention to the dancing in this scene? It's oh, the so classic funny. 80s. It's kind so, of side to side. It's just all white it, people yeah. and what's, fucking like. Yeah, it's a white, what, white boy dance. It's, what's even hilarious is uh, the fact they probably filmed it with no music at all playing. So those extras are all trying to do that to dead silence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's good. It's good. Um, so uh, it goes over to Technoir uh, and she's chilling. She calls the cops and the cops tell her to just hang out there. She, she says, call her roommate for. Yeah, she calls her roommate and then the cops. Right. Yes. And the cops are like, yeah. just stay there. We, we, we're we looking for you because we know what's going on. So uh, just do not leave Technoir. But this is where the Terminator and Kyle Reese both show up at the same time. Kyle Reese is there watching her and the Terminator shows up. Uh, Master. So. We get a little bit of uh, she's sitting at the table, and then we go into uh, Zack Snyder mode of slow mo. But yeah. this is slow mo used fucking excellently, by the way. It's a pretty good scene, a menacing scene where he's she's sitting at the table, and he's slowly walking across the floor, and his first view of her is blocked, so he doesn't quite see her. But then he turns, and he has you know the robotic way of looking at things. Uh, they, yeah. they talked about that. Yeah, he his turns head, his head or his, his head kind of like shakes when he like gets to the end of the motion. Yeah. yeah. Um and then, yeah. And then he's then he spots that that luscious mane of 80s hair. Yeah. And uh yeah, I think uh, I think that might be my target and starts making his way and in in yeah, perfect slow-mo, you know, pulls out the gun, gets the sighting on her, but we'll say Sarah, right Sarah's there. reaction time not the best. No, no, she's just there. staring like, okay. She looks up like it's her waiter. It's like she doesn't really have any yeah, yeah, exactly. impending doom. She's like, can I have a personal pan pizza? I didn't finish the one next door. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we get the scene. So he, he stops very menacingly. He pulls out a handgun with the laser sighting. Very uh, all slow motion. As Eric said, she's got no fucking reaction at all. She's just standing there dumbfounded. Pulls the gun out, gets the fucking sight right on her forehead, and then this is a f- this is awesome. I love this. Yeah, as so soon as Kyle Reese jumps into action with the shotgun, because we see him coming up from behind the bar, he pulls his school shooter trench coat open, he pulls the shotgun out, but then as soon as he takes the first shot, it rolls into fucking regular speed, um, and he puts about three in him and fucking puts him right in the ground. Yep. But then we get the moment where as soon as he hits the ground, the hand starts to do the little shake where we're we know yeah, he's down for like two seconds, two seconds, gets right back up again. Come with me if you want to live. Right. Famous lines used again in mm-hmm. at least the second one, probably all of them. But at that point, he just gets dumb um, and he grabs her and they start to go. She starts to run away. Uh, the Terminator then pulls his fucking Uzi out <laughs> and just starts spraying the fucking place. He's killing people left and right. Kyle jumps behind the bar. There's a girl behind Sarah Connor. They're running out. He kills the girl behind Sarah Connor. She weighs probably 78 pounds. Lands on Sarah <laughs> Connor. Sarah cannot get the 78-pound girl off of her. <laughs> She's trying. She's stuck under her. So now we get the exact same scene again as he approaches slowly, holding the Uzi up. He's going to he's gonna cap her. And again, Kyle Reese, bah, and blows him through the fucking front window. Um, this is a fucking great scene. Like, That's- this scene... You think iconic, so? Iconic. Uh, love it. I love it. The tech noir scene is incredible. So now the Terminator goes through the window. They get in the car. They start taking off. Uh, he gets up as well. Uh, he chases them. He's running. He's fast for a fucking 390 pound giant slab of muscle, whatever he weighs. I always forget when I watch this movie that uh, his haircut is different in the beginning than it is in the rest because he he runs through fire and gets all singed up. He acts like yeah, you know, it looks like they the they, eyebrows, the eyebrows, eyebrows yeah, brow, yeah. right? The eyebrows are gone and. They've done some prosthetic to make his brow more prominent. Yeah. yeah. They probably just put like a putty cover covering so he wouldn't have to shave yeah. his eyebrows off. So yeah. Yeah. yeah Schwarzenegger's like, I'm not shaving my fucking eyebrows. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I've got so much pussy to eat. They won't let me do it. If I, the women don't like them, no eyebrows. I've got to eat the pussies. <laughs> now, you know how many pussies I'm going to be eating this week, Jim Cameron? It'll be two less with my eyebrows shaved off. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as Arnold famously used to say, eating, eating is not cheating. Eating is not cheating. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, so, <laughs> so he starts chasing them down. We get a, we get a really good chase through the streets of L.A. Um, it, Arnold ends up commandeering a cop car, and uh, they lose him. They switch. Uh, they switch cars over in a parking garage. Manster. This is where he tells her. Like, what the fuck's happening? So you tell us what the fuck's happening. Uh, he tells her that his, ah, Jesus, his father, or her, John Connor sent him back to protect her. 
And I don't know. Is this this isn't where he told her about the picture yet? Well, no, he tells her. No, no, her, no. That's that's later in the tunnel. No, that, that's, that's later. later. No, the, yeah. the, like just what happened? Like, like why why are they coming back? Why is she the target? Is what I mean. Because she asks how the guy got up from being shot, and then it's what that segues into the whole yeah. discussion of. Yeah, right. that's what what Patrick said. What Patrick said. <laughs> Patrick, I'm going to let you take the rest of this. Why why is Kyle Reese sure. back okay. from where? So he sketches out a uh, a future. Or he's, even he says a possible future, he's not sure, um, where AI uh, develops sentience, uh, perceives uh, humanity as a threat after it's kind of given control of all of our nuclear weapons, great timing, and launches a preemptive strike to wipe out the human race and then starts to assemble kind of this industrial army of uh, murder machines to finish the job. And he, is, he grew up in that era and he's part of this kind of ragtag army. Although, are they ragtag? Because they, they won. I don't know how they go get from the point of just being a few guys crouching and throwing thermos bombs um, to thermos winning. Thermos bombs. They look like coffee thermoses to me. To uh, to actually winning the war. We don't see that part of it, but it must it must have happened relatively quickly because he looks about the same age. Right. Um, but then says that he's been sent back to protect her and that this entity called the Terminator is sent back to uh, take her out and then explains why. It's because she is supposedly going to... Uh, mother, the leader of this resistance army. All right. So he gets back. He chases them some more. We have another chase after this in the new car. Sarah has to drive while uh, Kyle Reese is, is literally operating shotgun. Um, he finally manages to fucking blast through the windshield a couple times, takes out the Terminator's fucking half of his face, and uh, Terminator drives into a fucking wall. But Eric, they get arrested, right? <laughs> you know, this is the one spot of the movie, like... I just had a little quibble with because yeah. he smashes the car and they have to, you know, they kind of stop and skid out before they hit the wall. But why didn't the Terminator just walk over and just finish exactly. the job? Like, Agreed. I, I, yeah, that was my one little uh, whatever. Mm, but, agreed. I, mean, I, I thought, I you know, and I feel like I've never thought of that before. But like, I was like, did the Terminator run from the cops? Why? <laughs> why would he run from the cop? Is this Terminator afraid of jail? And he's like, listen, listen, I'll kill him. I'll kill Sarah all day. <laughs> But I'm not getting fucked in the ass. I won't do it. I won't. I don't want to go to one of those places where I've got to blow guys for money. And, and I'm currency. I'm not doing that. Uh, yeah, I think that I, was a, that was a deleted scene I saw. So yeah. <laughs> a deleted scene with the Terminators <laughs> getting fucking fucked in the yard. <laughs> uh, they go back to the police station with uh, Paul Winfield uh, as the captain and uh, and our buddy Lance Henriksen. Ex-New York Yankee. Ex-New York Yankee. Uh, remember when Paul Winfield hit that ball and killed that bird? It was a big controversy. Oh, yeah. yeah remember that? Yeah. Oh. Which rate, from the Yankees to the LAPD. <laughs> that's right. That's right. By the way, Paul Winfield, something I never knew about him before, when I did the cast, when I was going to do that originally, openly gay in Hollywood. Oh, what? Yes. Yeah. Paul no Winfield, idea. openly no gay. Wow. I yeah, didn't either. No idea. I didn't either. Yeah, crazy. Um, nothing wrong with it. Just never knew that. And, uh, and, and especially for a black actor who was predominant in the seventies and eighties to be openly gay. That's good. Hey, good for you, Paul Winfield. Thank you. Hey, um, it's pride month. Pride month. Excellent. Good timing. That's right. Good. It is good timing. So they go back to the, to the, um, police station and they start, uh, asking questions of Sarah Connor and they start asking questions of Kyle Reese. Kyle gives them his whole story. Uh, the, the uh, what's the doctor's name? Doctor uh, Silberman. Silberman. Just like okay, and uh, Sarah is just telling them what she says he said, but she is clearly kind of believing him because she saw Terminator fucking take some serious fucking abuse. But as this is all happening, uh, the front desk clerk who's filling out some paperwork, <laughs> uh, just doing his daily mundane job, he gets a visitor master who shows up at the front desk. Arnold himself, the Terminator. Now before Arnold, I'm himself, a friend of Sarah Connor. Before he shows up, though, I do I do want to bring this up, uh, Manster. He got you know a shotgun blast to the face. So when he goes back to his two dollar a fucking hour motel, uh, what do we get? What do we what do we get? A little bit of uh, yeah, we, scene we do get a little self uh, eye surgery there. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I you know what I, I I do that not not on my eyeball, but you know if you if you got something going on, you get yourself an exacto knife and you just go to town and you can't stop yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I, I won't lie about it. I've done crazy shit. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've done some crazy shit. Doctors recommend that. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I just, you know, just just burn the tip, light it with a match. To- <laughs> you're good. In, infection, you go. inspection. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then when you're done, just flame it up a little, you know, cauterize the wound. Fire it up. That's Fire it right the fuck up. Absolutely. That's how I roll. 
Uh, he also his hands all fucked up, so we get a scene of him cutting open his forearm, and we yeah, get to see all sweet. the we get to see all the fucking the rods and the gears it's and a everything. Good effect. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so he fixes himself up. He can't fix his eye up. So the Terminator. Okay, Eric, explain the Terminator's mm-hmm. physiology. Like, what is it made up of? Um, the I, the exoskeleton. The, the whole thing. It's a cyborg, right? So there's there's a metal exoskeleton, but what's on the outside of it? Uh, you know, like a meat bag, like uh, skin. It's real. It's yeah. it's real flesh. It's not, <clears throat> you know, they, they they upgraded it to real flesh because the the six hundreds were rubber and easy to identify. But now, like they, that's something I'd like to see in one of these movies. Is like the fucking the flesh farm. Like yeah. are they using bodies or yeah, they bodies in flesh. In some of the comics, other other media like books and comics, they have been like they raise humans and then slaughter them a certain age. But that you kind of throw that out because if. If every T eight hundred looks like Arnold, that's obviously not not possible, right? Unless they raise humans and then have them work that wheel for about fifteen years from Conan, <laughs> and then <laughs> slaughter them, right? And, yeah, well, then it sure. works. I mean, Let's I mean, there's cinematically Arnold looks great, but there's an issue with him. I mean, you're talking about something that's supposed to infiltrate half starved, uh, like chronically malnourished people who probably all have radiation poisoning. This guy is like Olympian perfection. Yeah. And also, by the way, has an accent, which is not at all common to uh, Los Angeles, that area. No, so, Sky, no Skynet is uh, from Austria. You didn't know that? <laughs> Skynet of is. Course. Yeah, Austria is a leader of uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, so that's a little weird, but you just throw that out because he's just so great in the role. He just logic kind of goes out the window in that case. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. think it's like Alexa or Siri where you could change the voice of the Terminator? Like Homer, it, you could make it Homer Simpson? <laughs> yeah. in, in one. Make it a, make it a British it was, woman. In T3. Three, I think it was. They show. I don't know if it's the theatrical or the, or the longer oh, version. Oh, the fucking. Sergeant but they show Andy Arnold, thing? but he's got like a southern accent or something. So he was the physical model for it, but they obviously used a different voice. And yeah, there's I've a German. There's a German scientist who looks nothing like Arnold. It's like I'll change his voice. I, I've seen that <laughs> deleted scene. I have. Uh, all right, so the C101 or whatever it's called, the yeah. T800 shows up. And uh, and this scene I thought was great because what what does he say when the guy basically tells him to go away? Yeah, he said, "Can I see Sarah Connor?" No. Uh, okay, he's uh, originally was supposed to say, "I'll come back," but Arnold changed cool. it to uh, "I'll be back." So, uh, well, yeah, I think Patrick's going to go where I'm going. James Cameron told him. So Arnold said, "I would not say I'll be back." He would say, "I will come back." And James Cameron said, you fucking act and shut the fuck up and you read the lines the way I fucking wrote them. All right. He was on Stern not too long ago. And and he talks about that. And he's like, you know, because he said, I I don't think I would say I'll be it's a mouthful. I'll be back. I he said, I will come back. And he said, he said, all right, try it backwards. He didn't think robots would use contractions. I think. Yeah. And Cameron's like, you fucking just act like just (laughs) mind your fucking business and read what I wrote. (laughs) Which is fucking hilarious. But, but, but meanwhile, the robot just said, fuck you, asshole, to the maintenance guy like five right. minutes ago. So, you know. <laughs> well, one of the all-time classic lines in all of movies. What I, happens next is he fucking drives right through uh, the station and crushes that dude. Okay. Okay. But did you notice something? Did mm. you notice in the shot before when he's coming in, you see headlights. But when he right. comes in, the headlights are not on. Eric, did you notice that? I noticed that. And I also noticed the crash test dummy that he hit and not the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not the desk clerk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when, when, when they do the wide shot, you see headlights. And then as soon as the car comes through, the headlights are not on. Uh, so just a little continuity there. Okay. But, yeah. but it's okay. So this was made for $6 million. So yeah. Um, so he busts in and then we just get a scene of uh, of just unkempt fucking violence. Uh, fucking yeah, mayhem and violence in there. He kills every cop in this motherfucking place, including... The two cops we probably think are not going to die, or at least not early. Uh, Winfield, uh, Paul, Paul Winfield, and uh, Vukovic, and uh, and the captain uh, there. I almost said Captain Terrell, but that's his name in Star Trek. Too. Star Trek, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just just walks through and destroys the lights. Goes through. It, it, this is one of the first scenes where we see the HUD, the heads up display of his, the way oh, he right. sees things. You know, the yep. Terminator, and he just starts fucking killing everybody. In the ensuing chaos, Kyle. And Sarah end up together again, and they escape uh, to to get out to the next spot. Where do they end up after this manster? Is this where they end up going to the hotel? Yeah, no, they the end tunnel, up the tunnels first. in the tunnel first, right. and then the hotel after. All right, what happens in the tunnel, manster? Uh, she's really cold, and uh, 
you know, they, hey, they give, snuggle. Give her your coat, they, Reese. I mean, what, he's wearing his yeah. trench or whatever, and she's freezing. Right. Give him your coat. He, he takes uh, off his homeless pants and drapes it around her shoulders. <laughs> That's his schlong hangout. She's like, she's like, thank you, but these smell like a fucking bum stick. <laughs> uh, and, and I guess this is where um, tells her about the picture. Every line, every curve. Yeah. No, well, that's that's yeah. in the hotel room. Oh, the hotel is that room. There? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, they talk about shit and they fall asleep and and she leans on him. And yeah. then they have the he. I think the flashback where he's in the tunnel and the other Terminator comes in and yeah, wastes people. Yes. So they end up eventually ending up at like a uh, like a motel and um, Tiki Motel. At this point, the Tiki Motel. <laughs> at this point, Terminator is still looking for them, and they start to do the very romantic activity of creating pipe bombs. Yeah, uh, that's uh, on a date. That's called the Ted Kaczynski move. Um, <laughs> so I like start- how he. I like how he just leaves her to go get the stuff, though. With yeah, you just hang, you just hang yeah. out here. I can you even buy mothballs anymore? Oh, you can buy mothballs. Yeah. yeah. If you need any mothballs, by the way. And my, my grandfather died 25 years ago. Yeah. But like, go to his house and go in any drawer, and you'll <laughs> just get a scooper. My, I, as a kid, I just, I used to stay over there on weekends sometimes, and I just didn't, I didn't know mothballs were. We didn't have them in my house, but everything, everything in my grandfather's house was covered in mothballs. Yeah. Like, uh, I could smell mothballs right fucking now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, never had a mothball in my house. Yeah, no, because you're not my grandfather. Right. <laughs> he had them all. Right. <laughs> he had every one. <laughs> he, fucking great collection. Um, so they start making the pipe bombs. He does. He leaves her and it's like, you know, oh, don't worry. He, he won't find you here. Um, and then in the scene. So in 1984, my father took me to see this movie. I think it was the first R rated movie I ever saw in the movie theaters. I was nine years old. And uh, my father, you know, probably just like typical 80s misguidance, took me to see the Terminator at nine years old and had no problem with me watching all the scenes of just crazed violence. But as soon as Linda Hamilton's tits came out, and I shit you not, because I can tell you where this was. Mm-hmm. And Manster, you know where it is. Maybe Eric does too. The Dollar Theater on the Berlin Turnpike, right? You know what I'm talking about. Sure. Uh, we're watching this movie, and then it's very apparent that they're about to fuck. And <laughs> her shirt comes off, and my dad literally says to me, turn your head. No. And I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I turn I turn my head. And uh, and then he's like, okay, you know, you you could you could watch again. Next scene is the Terminator fucking like ripping someone's brain out of their head, <laughs> like, like like forearm deep into someone's like skull. And he's like, oh, this is great. And then like Linda Hamilton's nipple makes an appearance, and I can't see it. Um, so <laughs> much later on home video, I always love their sex scene because I always laugh and say that he she killed him because like at the end like they're holding hands and, and after yeah. they're done, his hand just like he's just like right. oh. Um, but well, he was a virgin, right? He never even, probably never even kissed a girl before. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. I mean, you know, good for him. First shot, he got her pregnant. Like, yeah. Hey, shoot, shoot your shot, man. Shoot your shot. Not only that, shoot your shot and fucking create the savior of the fucking known world. Good <laughs> for you, Kyle Reese. Good for you. You might be, you might be a three pump chump, but you still did a good job. So, uh, they have a cutesy moment where the next morning they're getting ready to go. Uh, the Terminator, what does the Terminator do? I'm failing to remember. He calls well, he her mom. He goes to the cabin. He goes, he to, goes to the mom's cabin. He goes and kills her parents, basically, right? That's what. Yeah. 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 Uh, so he figures out where they're at. Uh, and then. And does the mom's voice thing. And the voice does change it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Eric, where does this lead us to at this point? Let's see. So he shows up at the hotel, at the hotel, Motel Tiki. And, um, yeah, just enters the hotel blazing, but they just barely managed to get away right they uh they jump into a car and they Thanks uh they take the off. dogs yeah the dog that's, right. that's right that's right and uh, this is where he's on a bike right uh i don't yeah he's on a bike because he, he, they're throwing they're tossing pipe bombs which is a mm-hmm. i don't know as far as a you know a tactic you know you got to get the fuse just right to to, to you know and they hit the bike i don't know i mean i would get that shotgun back or something uh, those, those bombs and you know moving car i don't know about that i mean yeah. he's, he's he's a soldier i'm just a, i'm a, a civilian here but i don't know you are are you are you giving battle tactical advice <laughs> no, no, to no, Kyle step, fucking Reese? I'm stepping back. I'm stepping back. All right. think, you, step back, right, hot right. coffee lawsuit. You're, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a podcast. That's that's my niche. So <laughs> <laughs> So all right. So um Patrick, walk us through this next bit because I'm I'm failing to remember the pipe so bombs are going off. He winds up uh pulling over a truck because he gets run over by a truck. Right. A big oh, tractor yeah. trailer, and then uh climbs up the famous get out. 
pulls the one guy out, the passenger jumps out, and then just starts chasing after. Um, I think uh, they're in a they're in a pickup, and they get t- turned overturned. Right. Yep. And then wind up running into a conveniently unlocked factory. Right. No. The, the well, first they, 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 they first they blow it up. Yeah, truck, that's right. Yeah, with the, one yeah. of the last uh, so Reese is Reese is hurt. He hides in a dumpster, which looks really cowardly, and she just starts running away. The truck goes past. He hops out, throws a pipe bomb in the tailpipe, which blows up the whole truck. Right. Which right. was a nice miniature truck, by the way. Looks looks really good that yeah. scene. But the, you uh, could see the rear projection a little bit when she's yeah, running she's away running from away. it. But, but they actually you know, had to do it bad. twice, I believe. They blew up the first time, and the chain reaction they weren't expecting, and it was in the wrong order. Uh, so they had to rebuild the truck and do it again. And this time, it just came out perfect. So this is where they end up in the actual um, factory, uh, which yeah. I which I read while I, I don't know maybe I should oh, have known you this. You should say this is Arnold's last scene because he comes out on fire, and then after that he's replaced by the stop motion, correct, and physical yeah. prop of the T eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, which is great. And I because you think for a moment, you know, that the the movie's ending because he falls down in the fire and just completely burns. Right. At what point now has Kyle already been like uh, grievously injured? Because he, he gets hurt first and then blown up, or does he just get blown up? He is hurt when I think a pipe bomb goes off too close to him. Um, because he's hurt. Because she remember she screams out, Kyle. Well, she also she, he gets shot uh, when when oh, maybe he gets shot. Terminator is okay. following on the bike. Yeah, he right. Shoots Kyle while he's trying to drop a bomb. Right. So they end up in the um, in the, uh, the Terminator factory. compression factory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> which which I read somewhere. I don't know if this is true or not, and I feel like maybe I should know this, but. That it's supposedly a Cyberdyne factory. Is that ever said? Has anybody ever heard that before? They cut that out, right? All that that plot. That might be. There's an earlier scene they cut out where actually Sarah's talking about, well, we should find who made these things. We should stop it. And Kyle's like, that's not my mission. I'm not supposed to do that. It's too okay. dangerous. But I don't. that may have been added later on that it was Cyberdyne, but I'm not yeah. sure if it's ever said in the movie as it's Sansa's finished products. So. I, I, sometimes when I do, when we do these shows, I'll, I'll scan the Wikipedia plot you know, just to refresh things. And I thought, it, it, but again, that's written by anybody. I understand that, but it said cyber nine factory. So I just wasn't sure if that was something that was mm-hmm. solidified in, in like a sequel or something, but it doesn't matter. Um, he gets in uh, and uh, Kyle essentially ends up uh, sacrificing himself by shoving a pipe bomb into the uh, Terminator's, into the, pocket. Ter- Terminator's pocket, right <laughs> into his hot pocket. <laughs> and uh, and b- b- gets blown up, right? Like shrapnel goes everywhere. Sarah catches a fucking. Where does she get it in the leg? She catches yeah, she like gets a, the leg. She gets a robot <laughs> femur up her ass, and uh, she goes down. So she can't walk anymore. That was another plot point that they cut out. Originally, um, the Terminator was going to check her the leg of the Sarah Connors for like a uh, steel or some kind of yeah yeah I that I I read that yeah like he knew Sarah Connor had uh, ice skating injury when she was a kid. And had a uh, bolts in her ankle or something. And I thought it was, I yeah. thought it was this injury at the end of the movie that they were referencing. Yeah, there were different versions. From the one I read, the one I read was that they knew that she had hurt herself as a kid ice skating, yeah. and she had like a rod in her leg. So like after he killed the Sarah well, Connors, he was going to rip their part skin of off. The, uh, one of the time conundrums. Yeah. So that, I mean, it's weird that he would know something that was so so specific. Yeah. But not know what our middle initial is. It's kind of strange. But. Right, right. <laughs> All right. Let's let's run through the very end of this. Uh, Sarah is pulling herself through this uh, through this factory, and the T eight hundred is also you know Kyle blew its legs off, so it, they're having they're essentially having like a fucking crawling race. Um, she crawls up. She, cr- she crawls up and through Under a hydraulic press. That's maybe yeah. six inches. <laughs> yeah, something I couldn't fit through. Yeah, she gets she gets through this hydraulic press and gets herself all the way to the other side. Has to drag her fucking dead leg like out of it. And the Terminator, um, which you know should have like onboard computers and be like, I shouldn't crawl through this fucking thing, but is like, fuck it, I'm gonna crawl through this fucking thing. Brings himself up, starts pulling coming across and you know it, it's it's a fight right to the very end um and just as he's you know uh, reaching out to get her almost snatching her she hits the button uh says you know you're terminated motherfucker and <laughs> uh and he gets crushed in a uh in a hydraulic press in a giant like uh what do you want to call it like electricity and lightning everywhere yeah. and just a cool scene which, and uh, which coincidentally is what they told me in my last job my last day 
What's that? <laughs> Oh, you're terminated, fucker. That's a- you t- <laughs> Mother Humper. <laughs> Mother Humper, yeah. <laughs> Don't call HR on us, Eric. You're terminated, <laughs> fucker. Um, so, yeah, and the arm uh, kind of, like, is sticking out, and this is going to be a... Uh, we'll, we'll get to it when we talk about Terminator 2 uh, very soon. But, so there we go. We jump forward a few months, and now Sarah is in Mexico in a Jeep with a dog. She's got a dog. She's smart. And uh, she's clearly very pregnant. Uh, she's, she's very pregnant and she stops at a, uh, a, like kind of like a little gas station, a, a bodega of some sort. And, uh, she has a conversation they talk about a storm coming and all, all that metaphorical shit, but Manster, uh, what does she have a little, or what does a young boy do? Uh, yeah. A little young Mexican boy, uh, takes a little Polaroid snapshot of her at the time where she's doing like a little monologue in her head, I guess. No, she's at a and, tape recorder. Uh, she's recording. oh, tape recorder. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah. So, and she's literally thinking about Kyle Reese talking about him at that moment, uh, and that was one thing that he said to her when they had the little talk about the every line, every curve. Like, I want to know what you were thinking at that moment, right? So, yeah. which was a nice little callback. So that's the Terminator. All right, we're gonna get into box office and our rating, but real quick, couple minutes, Patrick. We talked about this earlier, I think, before we jumped on. Give us a couple of the paradoxes uh, in this, because it's a time travel movie. Yeah. They're all bound to have them. So what, what, give us a couple that happened in this thing. So I guess the best, uh, this is known as a predestination paradox, or often a bootstrap paradox, where in trying to prevent something from happening in the past, you actually cause that thing to come into existence in the first place. In one sense, there should never be any sequels to this. This is a closed loop storyline. Like, there's no reason, you know, they, she cannot stop Skynet from existing, but Skynet cannot stop John from existing. So they're just looped together in this kind of causality cycle. Um, the second movie, because it was, a, you know, wanted to make money, just threw that out and said, no, you can actually change the future. It's okay. Um, which completely contradicts this movie. But again, it's such a great movie. You just, you don't think about it. Yeah. Um, but another aspect is, History seems to be less fragile than they imply because the Terminator casually murders about 50 people yeah. who all had their own lives, who could have had children who cured cancer or maybe got elected president, but we'll never know. And that seemed to make no effect, no effect. Maybe it's because there's going to be a nuclear war and their lives would have been destroyed anyway. But it is odd that that John in, John specifically is very important to the future, but most of us are not. So. Well, as long as the Terminator didn't kill any <laughs> butterflies, I think that's the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it tries to kind of have its cake and eat it, too. It says time is very fragile, but also very durable at the same time. So I, I always have trouble with the whole, um, if Reese was killed before John was born, how is he there in the future to be sent back? So uh, Well, because he hasn't been born yet. So instead of, it's basically like... Like there's two of them running around at some point? Or? Well, no, there's because... Always the, the, they imply that he was born uh, closer to the war's beginning or maybe after the war happened. So his parents are still out there somewhere. They're, they're going to have him at some point. Um, and then he will if – you, if, you, if you like unscroll time from like the past to the present, he just appears fully grown. It lives, lives for a couple of days, is killed, and then years later is born and grows up and then vanishes when he goes into the time displacement okay. uh, machine. Yeah, so. that- you want to watch Primer after this? <laughs> <laughs> Primer is so good. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I have a headache now. So uh, thank you, Patrick, for uh, for running through that. Uh, let's talk about the box office real quick. This country, you've got to make the money first. All right. Box office for uh, what do we have here? Jesus. What was the, uh, you know, I fucking 6-4. 6-4. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so uh, 1984, weekend of uh, June 4th to uh, 6 4, you said, right? Or is that the. Yep. Yes. Yeah, but whatever. Uh, number five uh, in the box office that week. Uh, out for two weeks, $2 million. Uh, Thief of Hearts, which Ooh. I think was... Oh, Stephen Bauer, David Caruso. Okay, yeah, I, yeah that's the guy from uh, Scarface, right? Yeah, I thought so. I remember I remember very clearly the poster in my video store. All right, uh, number four, out for six weeks, $2.8 million. Places in the Heart. Uh, something I've never seen. It sounds, I don't know. Sally Fields. Fields? Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it next three movies all opened that week. Uh, 2.83, $2.83 million, uh, at number three, 
a movie I'm sure young Manster probably jerked off to quite a bit. Body Double. Body Double. Yeah. Manster <laughs> probably, yeah. probably snapped off a bunch uh, that time. Uh, also opening $4.0 million, so $4 million. Um, I guess it's a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a compilation of movie scenes. Oh, called- Terror in the Isles. Yes. Yes. I, I love that movie. Both how did, How was that number two ever? <laughs> like in, in a movie theater, like I, I, I could see like that being a big rental, but it was number two that weekend. There was um, a different. They had a bunch of those back then. There was a couple called That's Entertainment, which were all like MGM musical scenes. It was literally just a montage, and people would go to see it. You know, six yeah. two hours and watch a clip a clip show. I remember one from when I was a kid that had Cheech and Chong in it, and like Dan Aykroyd was in. It. I don't know what that was called, but like I I used to rent that a lot. But yeah, in the movie, I know uh, it came from Hollywood. Yes, I, 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 I've as a kid, I watched that all the time. Uh, all right, and opening just above that at four point oh two million dollars, uh, the Terminator. Oh, look at that! I wrote it down: six point four million dollar budget. Uh, <laughs> over, look at that! I'm not an asshole. And overall box office of seventy eight point three million dollars. So it was a fucking hit, and it uh, it spawned uh, fuck like four sequels and or maybe five sequels at this point and or. Movies in the line, a TV show, comic books, and the whole whole bunch of other stuff. It should say surprise hit. Nobody thought that was going to be a hit. That was just going to be like junk out for two weeks and then on the, on the video or cable. But very big hit. I remember Siskel and Eber at the time did a review of it like two weeks after it came out. <laughs> almost, yeah. begr- almost begrudgingly because they skipped it because they didn't think it would be anything. But it kept doing very good business. So they did like a belated review of it. Apparently, uh, Schwarzenegger was interviewed on the, the – It took they, this movie – had extra pre-production time because Schwarzenegger was making Conan the Destroyer. And so they, they had extra time to produce, uh, get pre-production done. And on an interview on the set of Conan the Destroyer, he's, he's wearing the Conan gear, but he's wearing, I guess the shoes from maybe he was doing a, a fitment of, of his costume for this. And somebody had mentioned his shoes and said, why, what are those shoes all about? And he said, it's for some dumb shitty movie I'll be making when I'm done with this. Like, and like, it was the Terminator, oh, uh, and even even he said because he, he said when he signed up for it, he said he just thought it was going to be you know like this this thing that didn't matter. Uh, spoiler alert, because I don't know if the episode will ever be made, but me and Eric months ago <laughs> were going to do a triple T on Conan the Destroyer, which I had not seen since I was a kid, and I love Conan the Barbarian, and that's a stupid dumb fucking flick. That movie's terrible. Uh, <laughs> I love Conan the Destroyer. I don't care. If people hate it because it's not as it's goofy and funny, but I think it's I think it's great. Eric, where did you land on it? I got to ask. I know it was a while ago, but I had such a hard time watching that movie. I was, uh, you know, it's like it's there. You know, I, I'm doing uh, my uh, stew. Yeah, we, uh, it's uh, it was, you know, <laughs> two, two point whatever ish. I don't know. I didn't hate it. I mean, you know, uh, it was, eh, you know, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's my eh, uh, bucket. <laughs> All right, so you would you would have given it a tolerable. I would have given yeah, it a trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have given it a trash. All right, let's rate this thing. Little Hand says it's time to rock and roll. Bring the noise. Zero being the worst thing ever, five being the best thing ever, quarter and half scale optional. I'll go first. Fuck it. Uh, look, I have great memories of this movie. Uh, as, as we all just said a second ago, it was made with the kind of like the thought of this is going to be nothing, and it is one of clearly the most influential action sci-fi time travel movies of all time it is uh it can be i guess considered the launching pad of short yeah schwarzenegger's career yes conan the barbarian a couple years prior but like this is the one that like really kind of solidified that oh this guy can do several things you know he he, he really can master 14 lines at once um james cameron like this is our introduction to the guy like i'm the last guy to talk about avatar movies i saw the first one Never saw the second one. I don't care about them. We did Titanic last year. We agreed that it's 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 a fine movie, but like you can't deny this guy is just like he's almost like his hitting record is almost perfect. Um, mm. He just yeah. he, he just knocks him out of the park one after another, one after another. Even Titanic, like the the artistry and the incredible amount of detail like we talked about, it's unheard of. Um, this guy doesn't fuck around. Um, he he puts his mind to something. He's going to make it, and he's probably going to make it very good. Um, I just, I love this movie. Uh, beginning to end, it, it's it's violent. Um, it is, uh, it's it's driving. You know I mean? It's essentially kind of a chase film, and it only takes a few times through the movie 
to kind of slow down to to kind of catch up to plot, but it's never boring. A lot of movies when they stop, like with the with the constant like movies like this, when they stop to to move the plot forward a little bit, you're kind of like, oh, just get to the next action scene. I'm not like that at all in this movie. I actually want to find out more about Kyle Reese. I want to find out more about um, Sarah Connor. I want to know how to make a pipe bomb. I want, I, 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 I want to know how to make a pipe bomb. I, the, the Ted Kaczynski. Uh, I'm, I'm a five all day. This is a five for me. I absolutely love the Terminator. Uh, so let's go over to Hot Coffee Lost. Let's talk to Eric. And uh, Eric doesn't give five. <laughs> so he's, so let, let, let's so find you, out. ERA spoiler alert. You know, it's not a five. Um, yeah. So uh, this is my uh, favorite of the Terminators. Yeah, I like this better really? than T2. Um, like by a mile almost. I, I get it's almost like you know you you know where maybe Generation X like ended and you know Millennials begin because Millennials are all about the T two. I don't know for me, um, you know the story is so tight that the concept when I was a kid was just you know how are you going to kill this thing like it was it seemed like new completely you know I'd never seen anything like this before and um, you know at the time and still now the special effects are you know even like the lightning the the light lighting effects, the lasers when they land, you know, movies that came out 10 years later, it's really cheesy, you know, uh, you know, you see li- li- lightning effects and like brain damage and, you know, it's almost like drawn on, but um, the special effects are awesome. And the, the script is awesome. And the performance is like Reese's earnestness, just how he reads says the lines, you know, when he's talking to Sarah, it, like is compelling to me, just like how he talks or, or whatever. So I know uh, Cameron gets, gets a lot of crap for his dialogue or what, whatever, but, um, I don't know. I think the performances were good too. The cops, even you know, kind of like a little bit of a comic relief ish kind of in there. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, I'm with John. You know, it's for me, it's not a five. If I gave Jurassic Park a four point five, I got to give this like a four seven five. I mean, it's it's my favorite Terminator. May, it might be my favorite Cameron if I think about it. So hmm. I, I really do this one. Fair. Let's go to the monster. <laughs> fair. Four point seven five. That's fair. <laughs> uh yeah i mean come on it's a landmark film uh all other i think sci-fi action films are derivative of this one in some way or another uh it's relentless it's pretty efficient i think for a first uh first time movie it's not I mean, overly long it's like an hour and 40 no, minutes it's it's a good it's a good time um yeah it's under two hours which is which is great and uh like eric was saying um the, the lighting bolts like in, in those dystopian scenes they're great yeah they're they're not just like a, a scratch and like a little flare or something they're really good um, and I think that was intentional I, I remember reading something that uh, uh, Winston said that's Kirk uh, Kirk Cameron. <laughs> Kirk Cameron. Jesus wow. Christ. Jim, Jim Cameron was very specific about about those. I, I want to see Kirk Cameron's Terminator yeah honestly. right. <laughs> Um, yeah, like the Rapture series. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and what else is endearing about it is the low budgetness of it, and you know that scene where he's doing his eye, and then it's she, you see just the the sculpted head. It's kind of disturbing looking because oh, yeah. you can tell it's Arnold, but it's so smooth and it's just and it's so fake looking. But you know, it just has that 1980s quality that that is great. Um. Like I said, yeah, a lot of thought put into it. It's a smart story, and whew, I want to give it a five, but I want to leave room. So I'm going to say 4.75. Leave room 4. for what, mac and cheese or ice cream? <laughs> what, what is this, Thanksgiving? What are you leaving room for? You get dinged because the Terminator, you know, after the crash, he walks away. That's the thing. That's the 2.5 thing right there. Okay. All right. All 4.75. Right. All right. Patrick, take us away. I guess I'm a little harsher on this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like between three, seven, five, and four. I think good it's very Lord. good. I just feel it's <laughs> overshadowed a little bit by T2. Um, right. Maybe that's not fair. Judging the movie in and of itself, it's probably a four star film. Um, like like everyone said, it's very efficient. He gets he gets like every penny of that tiny budget is on the screen there. There's nothing. There's no waste in this movie really. That's why a lot of those subplots are turned out because he just he just wanted to focus on the pacing and the tension. Um, I do think maybe the story is a little too ambitious for that low of a budget, but he does a very good job depicting the future in just a few scenes he gets. Michael Bean, that, that's a star-making performance right there. Uh, I really wish he had had a different attitude about being a star. He could still be, you know, not, not doing low-budget independent 
direct the video stuff. He could be a big star, but he chose a different path. Um, Linda Hamilton's pretty good. And of course, Arnold, Arnold, obviously, I don't know if you'd call this acting. It's more of a presence, right. an mm-hmm. actual performance. Yeah. But obviously he's the charisma there is like just undeniable. So, uh, you know, I'll go with the four. I'll go with the four. You guys peer pressure me into uh, giving it a four stars. So. <laughs> you want to tr- try some heroin, Patrick? I, I, I really, I really like this movie, but I love Terminator too. So I, yeah. uh, this is a great, and the, and the influence of this is, is there was a handful of movies in the eighties that were kind of mixes of science fiction, action and horror. And this is up there, like at the top rank of that. So. All right, so only one five, uh, one two four point seven fives. Eric is automatically never going to give a five, so we, we know that. Patrick I respect that. A, I respect that. Patrick gives it a four. Uh, all right, uh, fair, very fair. I asked the two of you now uh, before the summer's over. Uh, we're going to do Terminator Two. You guys come back for that one. Yeah, uh, let's because, do it because I think this is a fun. We'll, a fun we'll combo. be we'll be back. Yeah. Oh, boo. Ooh. We'll, we'll <laughs> come back. Shut your. We, we will come back. Shut yes. your fucking mouth and read what I wrote. <laughs> All right, Manster, tell everybody where they can find the pint and then say the words. Uh, Google us. Uh, you'll find us anywhere on any podcatcher, uh, Facebook and YouTube. It's the pint of pop culture podcast on Instagram and threads. It's at the pint podcast. Give us a review if you if you if yeah. you like us. Pretty please give us a review, top. man. There's just not enough reviews out there. Nobody gives us reviews. I'm fine if you give us a three. I'm fine if you don't go, Eric, and just give us a four point seven five. But like <laughs> next time you're on your laptop looking up your OnlyFans or whatever you're doing, just drop over on Apple or any of the podcatchers and just say I like this show five or whatever. Like, yeah, I just I would love it so much. Yeah. And Patreon, uh, www.patreon.com backslash the pint. We have two tiers. Uh, you know you want to do it. Just do it. Do it. Peer pressure. Do it. Give it a four. <laughs> Give it a five. <laughs> See ya. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. <laughs>